So Attack on Titan Season 4 is just around the corner. It's been a while since I've watched the show and I was looking for a quick reminder of what this series is about. But what if you can't be bothered to watch long in-depth videos of each individual season? Well just don't even worry about it because I've got you covered. Here's the incredibly complex story of Attack on Titan Seasons 1 to 3 in just about as quick as humanly possible. Let's begin. Attack on Titan is set in a world where humanity has been forced behind walls, thanks to the appearance of large, horrible, grotesque giant man-children called Titans. Titans are really hot, have magical healing powers, don't need to eat, can't talk, and can only be killed via a strong strike to the nape of the neck. Very strange I know, but just bear with me. There are three major walls that defend humanity from the Titans. Wall Cena, Wall Rose, and Wall Maria. Our story begins in a small outlier district on the outer wall named Shigunshina. We're introduced to three children, Eren Jaeger who's extremely obnoxious and shouts all the time, Mikasa Ackerman who's incredible at fighting, dead inside and absolutely rapid, and Armin who's a massive wet wipe. The civilization of Attack on Titan is essentially run by the military which is split into three branches. The garrison regiment who keep order within the walls, the military police who serve as personal guards for the king, and the scout regiment who explore outside the walls. It becomes immediately clear that Eren is obsessed with what lies beyond the wall. Walls. Therefore, he expresses a desire to join the Scout Regiment. This gets him into an argument with his family, as the Scout Regiment is kind of dangerous, because pretty much every time they go on a mission, loads of people get eaten by Titans. Eren does a bit more shouting, and his dad leaves on a work trip, but not before giving him a key and promising to one day show Eren his creepy work basement. Eren runs away from home in a fit of rage, and ends up talking to Armin, who mentions that the walls haven't been breached for over a hundred years. The walls are then breached by a Titan dubbed the Colossal Titan, as it is a monumental 60 meters tall. It's also made completely out of muscles. It's accompanied by a smaller titan known as the Armored Titan thanks to its hard outer plating. The Colossal Titan breaks down the wall, allowing a load of smaller titans inside to lay waste to Shigunshina district. During this attack, Eren's mother is trapped underneath some rubble and then eaten by a titan. The children are then saved by a friendly soldier. Eren goes mental vouching to kill every single titan in existence. However, the damage has been done and the whole of humanity has to fall back behind wall road. This moment is accented by an internal monologue from Eren in which he says, Home was a pen. Humanity, cow. An analogy which he'll continue to use for the entire series. Flash forward two years and Eren, Mikasa and Armin are signing themselves up for the military in a district called Trost, a town on the outskirts of Wall Rose. It's here that we meet a whole new array of characters. There's Jean who kind of serves as Eren's rival, challenging him on his extreme and annoying views. This dynamic works pretty well as it shows two different reactions to this apocalyptic scenario. Up until this point, I'm not gonna lie, I, I was kind of getting sick of Eren's rants. There's also Sasha, better known as Potato, girl whose entire character revolves around food and the acquisition of food, there's Krista who's also a massive wet wipe, Emir who's a psychopath, and Connie who's bald. There's also Reiner who's really hench, Bertolt who seems like a pretty nice guy, and then there's Annie who's also a complete psychopath. The guys do some training for a little bit, like about uh, like two years or so. This involves learning to use some sort of gas propelled winch system, allowing them to soar through the air, and they're then faced with a choice of which regiment to apply for. Eren gives some sort of emotional speech, and most of the boys, aside from a few, decide to sign up for the scouts. Everything seems to be going swimmingly until the Colossal Titan turns up again and smashes down another wall, this time in Trust where they're all training. Eren goes a bit gung-ho and tries to take him on, but the Colossal Titan uses some sort of steam attack to defend himself, and then disappears. Because there's now a hole in the wall, an evacuation begins, and Eren and the other soldiers are sent to hold off Titans while it occurs. This goes really well, so well in fact that loads of people die and Eren ends up doing a forwards roll across multiple houses. Armin is about to be eaten, but Eren saves him by feeding himself to the Titan instead. Meanwhile, the rest of the boys are running out of gas for their grappling hooks, and the people who are supposed to bring them gas can't get the gas because there are Titans guarding the gas. All hope is gone until a weird looking Titan, dubbed an Abnormal, appears and starts beating up all of the other Titans, allowing the boys to group up and attempt to reclaim the gas. Armin comes up with the genius idea to shoot the Titans and then kill the Titans, which works, and the day is saved. Once back outside, the abnormal seems to be a bit worse for wear, and after beating up a couple more titans, collapses on the ground. The nape of the titan's neck opens up, and Eren appears from inside, suggesting he possesses the ability to morph into a titan. It turns out that, while Eren was just chilling in the titan's stomach, he went a bit sicko mode and accidentally transformed himself into one. Understandably, everyone's a bit freaked out by this, so when Eren 
Aaron returns with Mikasa and Armin, he's held at gunpoint. They question him, but he can't remember anything, so they decide they have no choice but to shoot all three of them with cannons. Cannons are a bit of a running theme throughout Attack on Titan, but pretty much every time they're used, they do absolutely nothing. They're honestly the most useless weapons in the series. Anyway, just as Eren is about to be shot by cannons, he looks down at the key his dad gave him all those years ago, which triggers his memories of his dad injecting a mysterious liquid into him, also mentioning something about needing to find his creepy basement. Eren then bites himself, which turns him partially into a titan, saving himself and his friends from all the cannon fire. Armin gives an emotional speech and presents a plan to utilise Eren's titan form to plug the hole in the wall. This bold guy, who's the leader of the garrison regiment, is pretty happy with this plan, and they decide to carry it out. The idea being, the army will draw titans away from the hole in the wall, then Eren will sneak round the side with a small team of bodyguards, transform into a titan, pick up this huge boulder and plug the hole. They put the plan into action, but when Eren next transforms into a titan, he for some reason throws a punch at Mikasa. Mikasa tries to talk some sense into him, but then he just punches himself instead. Armin rocks up and gives another one of his emotional speeches, snapping Eren out of his trance, and the mission is successful. So successful that Eren is put in jail and put on trial for a death sentence. Wait, whoa. This is where we're introduced properly to Commander Irwin and Captain Levi. In short, Commander Irwin is a big brain and Captain Levi is an extremely overpowered character. So overpowered in fact that while in the courtroom, he manages to beat Eren to an absolute pulp. Let's ignore the fact that Eren is tied to a pole. This proves to the higher ups that Levi can keep Eren under control and it's agreed Eren will be monitored by the scout regiment from now on, training to be able to use his titan powers for humanity's sake. He's immediately put to use and goes on a mission with Levi special ops squad. Here we're also introduced to the mad scientist of the scout regiment, Hanji. The guys then roll out on their expedition led by Commander Irwin. Irwin likes to use this thing called the wide formation several times throughout the series, where they all travel in small groups and communicate using signal flares. Trust me, something always goes horribly wrong when they're in the wide formation. And this time is no different, as another abnormal titan appears. But this one is a g g g Girl? Unlike any titan they've seen before, the female titan seems to be intelligent, and she proceeds to own everyone. Armin, being an absolute mastermind, concludes that there's a human inside the female titan controlling it, just like Eren is able to do with his titan form. Nobody really knows what's going on here, particularly Levi's squad. The female titan seems to be tracking Eren, and after arriving in a forest, the female titan and the special ops team have a bit of a duel. Erwin suddenly turns up with a special attack, and the female titan is trapped. However, there's no way to find out who's behind the female female titan as she's a metapod and knows the move hardened. She then starts shouting which draws in a load of other titans that proceed to eat her alive. It's presumed whoever was inside the female titan is dead and they begin to retreat back to the wall. However, the female titan almost immediately returns and pretty much completely wipes out Levi's squad, apart from Eren and Levi himself. Eren goes sicko mode again, turns into a titan and throws a few haymakers before being easily beaten and kidnapped. Mikasa and Levi chase the female titan, Levi reveals how overpowered he is and Eren is saved. Once back in civilization, the scout regiment loses custody of Eren and he's handed over to the military police. Armin seeks out Annie, the psychopath girl from their training, for help as he thinks Eren is going to be executed. As it turns out, Armin was actually doing some Sherlock Holmes detective work and he lures Annie into a trap where she reveals her identity as the female titan. Eren and Annie have a rematch but this time Eren wins, forcing Annie to freeze herself in a cryostasis like Aang from Avatar. Also, the wall is made of titan! Titans. End of season one. Yes, you heard me right, the wall is made of frozen titans, specifically out of their hardening power. The leader of a cult turns up and lets Commander Hanji know if the titans are let into sunlight, it's possible they could reanimate. I'm sure this blanket will do the job, don't worry guys. We then jump back 12 hours in time to see the main cast of characters at the scout regiment headquarters. Some titans appear, so every single side character sets off on horseback to warn surrounding villagers. During this, we learn that Bold Guy's village has been destroyed and Potato Girl used to live in a forest. Then we come into contact with the creepiest titan yet, the Beast Titan, who as it turns out is actually able to talk. The team hatch a plan which involves Eren learning the hardening technique to plug up the hole in Wall Maria. There also seems to be something suspect about Emir and Krista, who have been growing close to each other up to this point. Emir is eating a tin of tuna, but the writing on the tuna can is in a different language. Ooh hoo hoo! The Beast Titan turns up at their headquarters and begins to attack. Reiner and Bertolt fight off some of the 
Titans before Reiner is bitten and his arm is broken. Things aren't going well and the boys are overwhelmed until, in a shock turn of events, Ymir takes it upon herself to transform into the weirdest goblin looking titan ever. We then get a flashback where we find out that 1. Ymir is a titan which we already knew seeing as she transformed into a titan. More importantly though that Krista is actually the daughter of a noble family named the Rice family, with her real name being Historia Rice. Back in the present, Emir starts racking up the kills, but the Titans are too many and she can't hold them off for long. Luckily, Hanji arrives with backup and although critically injured, Emir survives thanks to her Titan healing powers. Back at the wall, everyone takes the opportunity to regroup. During a series of conversations, Reiner pulls Eren aside and drops the biggest bombshell of the entire series in the most casual way. I'm the armored Titan. He's the Colossal. That's correct, Reiner is the Armoured Titan and Bertolt is the Colossal. Reiner explains that their initial goal was to wipe out all of humanity, but if Eren agrees to come with them, that won't be necessary. Eren goes a bit small brain here and doesn't believe them, refusing to go with them. Reiner responds to this by healing his bitten arm. Mikasa then swoops in to take them out, but before she can do that, Reiner transforms into the Armoured Titan and Bertolt becomes large in 3D. Some fighting breaks out and it looks like Eren has the upper hand over Reiner, that is until Bertolt decides to engage ragdoll mode and flop onto both of them. This allows them to kidnap Eren and Ymir, taking them to the same forest that the fight with the female titan happened in earlier. Now that the four have some time to talk, Reiner alludes to being part of a larger group of titans which Ymir is unaware of. We don't learn much else though as Reiner has lost touch with reality, having posed as a normal soldier for so long. However, during Ymir's backstory we do learn that she was transformed into a titan against her will, along with a bunch of other people. Ymir decides to join Reiner and Bertolt's titan club on the promise they'll protect Krista from harm. So they kidnap Krista and resume their escape. But rut row, it's the entire cast of side characters and they're here to rescue Eren. Commander Irwin then comes riding out of the distance followed by a huge pack of titans which stops Reiner in his tracks. The boys manage to recover both Eren and Krista but before they can piece the scene, Reiner throws a titan at them knocking them off their horses. Eren and Mikasa find themselves in a spot of bother but luckily Eren learns a new move which allows him to control nearby titans. This power is known as the Coordinator and it's the reason Reiner and Bertolt tried to kidnap him in the first place. Erwin orders a retreat back to Wall Rose, whereas the Titan Club managed to escape to Wall Maria. Season 2 ends on the conclusion that all Titans are assumed to be inhabited by people. Season 3 begins with the boys being indoctrinated as the new Levi squad. The cult leader from the previous series is about to spill the beans on Historia and her relation to the Rice family, but then he dies. Levi hypothesizes that the killer could be a mass murderer by the name of Kenny the Ripper, also known as Kenny Ackerman, also known as Levi's uncle. Kenny the Ripper then turns up with his gang of hoodlums and kidnaps Eren and Historia. Levi and Hanji do some investigating surrounding the Rice family, finding that they are in fact the true royal family within the walls, and the current king is merely a puppet. The real king is a man named Rod Rice, who as it turns out is not only behind Historia and Eren's kidnapping but is in fact Historia's father. Rod Rice tries to reconcile with Historia and she's conflicted about whether to trust him thanks to a long history of neglect from her parents. This neglect comes from the fact that her mother was Rod Rice's mistress rather than his actual wife. Rod tells Historia that she is the one who will save humanity, which coincides with Hanji discovering that when a titan eats someone with titan powers, they revert back to human form and obtain those powers for themselves. Levi and the boys then set off to save Historia and Eren as Edwin plans a way to overthrow the puppet king. This involves him purposely being put on trial where he baits the higher ups into saying some pretty messed up stuff, persuading the leader of the military police and the bald guy from earlier to join him in overthrowing the king. As this is going on, Eren wakes up in a room made out of crystals, looking weirdly kinky. Historia and Rod give him a back massage which triggers the same memories of his father injecting him with a strange liquid liquid from earlier, only this time we see that the strange liquid is what originally turned him into a titan. He then ate his dad, inheriting his dad's titan powers, powers his dad originally inherited from eating Historia's half-sister. Let me try and explain this in a different way because this is where it gets really confusing. Way 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 back in time there was a slave named Emir Fritz living in a kingdom called Eldia. One day she accidentally came into contact with the devil and became the first person to ever inherit titan powers. Hence. She 
she is known as the Founding Titan. Ooh. The King of Eldia used Ymir for his own gain, and their descendants were given Titan powers too. However, 13 years after going Titan mode, Ymir died. Her Titan powers were split into nine different variations, which somehow distributed across a number of noble families. However, the powers of the Founding Titan stayed within the Fritz royal family. Powers which involved the ability to wipe people's memories and the ability to control all normal Titans. These powers are passed down by a ritual involving the eldest descendant transforming into a normal Titan and then eating their predecessor every 13 years. Because Eldia now had nine powerful super Titans at their disposal, they waged war on their neighbouring kingdoms, particularly one called Marley. But after a new king named Karl Fritz came into power, he felt really guilty about all the war and destruction, so he rounded up most of the Eldians, pieced the scene with them to a nearby island called Paradis, where he built three big walls, erased everyone's memory, and changed his family name to Rice. He then made up some sort of story about how the Titans appeared out of thin air one day, and that's the whole reason they live behind walls. Meanwhile, the people of Marley took back their homeland, inheriting a few of the nine Titan powers along the way. Karl Fritz made sure that each of his descendants would inherit the founding Titan's powers, along with his memories to prevent anyone finding out about the outside world. Rod Rice is Karl Fritz's grandson, and the reason he's got Eren chained up is because, thanks to Eren's dad, Eren now possesses the power of the Founding Titan. Therefore, Rod Rice plans to have Historia turn into a normal Titan, eat Eren, and inherit the Founding Titan back into the royal family, allowing Karl Fritz's memory to sustain control over the walls. Kenny Ackerman and his team are brought in to help bodyguard the ritual. Levi and the boys break into the crystal caverns and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kenny and the others. But midway through, Kenny overhears that the royal bloodline are the only ones who can truly harness the power of the Founding Titan, causing him to rage out because he was planning to steal it for himself. He then goes to release Eren, but Eren has given up his will to fight. Historia remains dubious as to why nobody before her has used the Founding Titan's powers to save humanity. Rod Rice has no proper answer to this, so Historia loses trust and breaks the injection needle. Unfortunately, Rod Rice laps up the serum off the ground and begins to transform into the biggest and most disgusting looking Titan so far. The cavern begins to collapse as Rod Rod Rice becomes larger and larger. Luckily, Eren drinks a random bottle of fluid he finds on the ground, giving him amplified hardening powers, allowing him to keep the cavern secure. Everyone escapes, and they head back to Walsina to discuss what to do about Rod Rice in his human caterpillar form. They fire a load of cannons at him, which doesn't work because cannons are useless, so instead they throw some bombs inside him and blow him up from the inside. Historia finds Rod's body in mid-air and chops him in two to prevent him from regenerating. She lands and immediately proclaims herself the new queen. Levi then finds Kenny on the brink of death, who hands him a box containing a titan serum before he dies. A couple of months then pass, Hanshi develops a way of killing titans by dropping massive logs on their heads, and Erwin rallies up the troops to go and reclaim Walmaria. They specifically target Shiganshina district, as that will also allow Eren to find his father's creepy weird basement from all that time ago. All seems to be going well as Eren begins to harden the outer wall, however, Reiner appears and transforms into the armoured titan before the Beast Titan appears and surrounds the others. The Beast Titan begins to play Wii Sports Baseball by crushing up large boulders and bowling them towards Erwin and his fleet. Meanwhile, Eren battles it out with Reiner, and thanks to help from Hanji and Mikasa, he's victorious. That is, until Bertolt appears in a flying barrel and transforms into the Colossal Titan. The Colossal and Beast Titan attack Erwin's troops from both sides. Erwin takes his troops on a suicide charge, providing a distraction while Levi flanks around the side. Erwin is mortally wounded, but Levi reaches reaches the Beast Titan and absolutely owns him. I mean, he destroys the guy. Unfortunately, the Beast Titan is able to escape thanks to... Uh, oh, what is that? What is that? Meanwhile, on the other side of the wall, Mikasa and Hanji manage to take out Reiner again while Armin goes big brain and devises a plan to sap Bertolt's strength by forcing him into using his steam ability. Sadly, this does involve Armin becoming a human lump of coal, although it does provide time for Eren to seal up the wall for good and sneak up behind Bertolt to apply the lethal blow. Once everyone is regrouped, Levi appears with the serum Kenny gave him, and Eren begs him to inject Armin, which would give him Titan healing powers and stop him from dying. This decision is made incredibly difficult as a surviving scout returns with Commander Irwin's body. Who does Levi save? Armin, who has a huge brain, or Irwin, who has a huge brain? How will he ever decide? Bribery is the answer! Eren and Mikasa kind of force Levi's hand and he chooses to save Armin. Armin eats Bertolt and gains the power of the Colossal Titan. The remaining survivors then head to Eren's ruined house and open up his dad's basement. Within the basement, they find three books which inform the main characters of life 
outside the walls, explaining the situation with Eldia and Marley that I alluded to earlier. As it turns out, Eren's father grew up in one of the few Eldian families to remain on the mainland after Carl Fritz fled to Paradis. After strict persecution from the people of Marley and the death of his sister, Eren's dad Grisha joined an underground organisation called the Eldian Restoration Movement. Here, he finds out that Marley plans to invade Paradis thanks to its abundance of natural resources. He also falls in love with a woman named Dina Fritz, a direct heir of the royal family, and they have a son named Zeke. Grisha hatches a plan to send his own son Zeke within the walls to steal the founding titan's powers from the Rice family, but Zeke nopes out of this plan and instead turns his parents in, along with the rest of the Eldian restoration movement. They're then taken to Paradis and turned into titans one by one, which presumably is where all the titans have been coming from all these years. Just as Grisha is about to be turned, he's saved by an undercover Eldian named Kruger, posing as a Malian officer. Kruger reveals himself to be a variation known as the Attack Titan, passing down his powers to Grisha, who vouches to infiltrate the walls and steal the Founding Titan's powers himself. This explains how Eren ended up in the whole situation with Rod Rice and Historia, as he inherited the Attack Titan and Founding Titan when he ate his dad. Historia decides to release all of this newfound information to the public, and over the course of the next six months or so, they clear the land of Titans using Hanji's log technique. Season 3 ends with the Scout Regiment discovering the docks used to create Titans in Grisha's backstory. For the first time, they set their eyes on the sea, as they contemplate what to do about the impending threat of a Malian invasion. End of story so far. <sighs> I suppose all that's left to ask is, what do you guys think will happen in Season 4? Just let me know in the comments below. I started writing the script for this video, expecting to be able to summarise the story pretty quickly, but as it turns out, it's much more complex than I remember. I'm obviously pretty excited to see what's going to happen. It's a great series, what can I say? Please subscribe or I'll use my titan powers on you. Thanks as ever for watching, and goodbye. <laughs>